Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, two days before mommy issue or parent issue training. First one ever training on mommy issues, something that dwells or frequents us often. Most of us, at least. Good morning, Colleen. Welcome, Jake. Bake. What's going on? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Jordan. Jordan Montgomery. Welcome, Patrick. Welcome, everybody. Let's get some questions rolling. Get Team David Meltzer up here. If you want to join me in training, Team David Meltzer is pinned here right now. Join my text community, 949-298-2905. I'm in the closet here. Uh, email me, david at dmeltzer.com. Get my exercises, guides, books, all for free. I'll sign one, send it to you, pay for shipping. Not a problem. What do you think about Wall Street bets? You know, I think uh, it's a bet. And I think a certain portion of what you make should go towards bets. If you like to make bets, it's there's a great joy in it. But a certain portion, and stick to that. Congratulations, Bonnie, being considered for another TV show. Uh, she starred on Two Minute Drill. Won, by the way, over $50,000 of cash and prizes. And now she's been asked to be on another TV show. Uh, so we are so proud of uh, Bonnie there at Posh Notions. Good morning. Thank you, Marley, the millionaire. Thank you so much. All right, the questions are pouring in. Don't forget, David at dmelter.com. Friday's training is 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, you can uh, also catch the replays on the playbook, which is my podcast. Download it, share it, like it. Uh, it's on and featured on a playlist on Spotify, the playbook. The playbook is on Entrepreneur. The playbook is on iTunes, on Google Play. It's on every platform, but it's featured there. So check it out, especially Spotify features it. They've been so gracious to me and Entrepreneur as well. The playbook. Uh, just check me out, david at dmeltzer.com. Uh, here we go. It is good to forgive, but not forget. Yeah, right? It's like, I want to trust, but I'm going to vet you. It's the same exact thing. Uh the forget part, not to forget, is what lesson did you learn uh, through your forgiveness? But you absolutely, it's great to forgive. Uh, you can't move on. You won't have peace and certainty in your future until you have forgiven yourself and taken accountability for whatever activity has occurred in your life. And you absolutely don't want to forget it. That means you learned a lesson from it. Uh, and that's the key to life. Life is about lessons. Lessons will keep on coming until you learn them, they'll result in pain uh, to indicate you haven't learned a lesson yet. How do you handle moments when you feel lonely on that empty mile and rebuilding? Well, everyone's going to have uh, minutes and moments of spiritual insecurity. Spiritual insecurity is the ego-based consciousness that creates those need to be worried and upset and anxious and frustrated and all of those different things. And what we want to do is practice shortening the amount of time that we spend in spiritual insecurity. And if we can do that as a practice, as a muscle, we increase the amount of joy and decrease the amount of stress. And it's just a mathematical equation to me, a practice to me, the same as any sport or any type of uh, skill set that you want to practice. It's just, to me, one of the most important five practices. I practice the what, I practice the who, I practice the how, I practice the now, and of course, I practice the spiritual insecurities that I have. I call it practicing ending fear. Uh, great practices uh, that we can attribute to what we're doing. What does practice ending fear mean to you? Very funny, you should ask. Uh, to me, it's shortening the length of time uh, that I spend in this spiritual insecurity, uh, recognizing number one, what I'm afraid of two, instead of resisting it, fighting it, going over it, under it, through it, around it, overselling it, back and selling it, misleading it, uh, cheating it, lying to it. I simply have the magic key and that's the stop. I simply stop and counterintuitively, I drop down to my center, to my higher self. And then I roll in the right trajectory according to my, what, my who? My how and my now. And that's how I get it done. If you're more interested in that, I got exercises, guides, and books on this stuff. I'll send it to you for free. I'll pay for shipping. Not a problem. David at dmelzer.com. You can join my text community, 949-298-2905. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, looking for my dear friend uh, who has written an unbelievable book coming out in February, February 23rd to be exact, The Amazing Leslie Zan. Uh, please uh, 
give a quick comment so I can join you or send a request. It is 804. I'd love to bring you on at 805 at Leslie Zan. That is it right there, my friend. Thank you so much. Um, join the text community. It changed your life. It changed my life as too. 949-298-2905. Hi, Leslie. There she is. Leslie.Zan. You can see her here. This is one of the most amazing women entrepreneur. Uh, and she's written a new book called Outrageous Achievement coming out February 23rd. Um, and there she is. How are you? Can you hear me? Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for joining I me. I can. That's awesome. Well, I am so excited about your book. Always a pleasure. I love <laughs> the energy of your audience, too. Yeah, well, they're amazing, and they're here every day on all kinds of different platforms. And uh, But for me, you know, what is you know, it entail to be outrageously achieved, an outrageous achiever. Well, you know, I, and you and I've talked about this so often, Am I'm always curious why so many people have a dream and yet so few people go after it. And it's just something that I couldn't get out of my head. I teach it, I train it, I thought about it, and I finally decided I had to put it into a book. I mean, I, I believe there is a, a roadmap um, a path to follow, strategies people can put into practice to move not just to good enough, but to their full potential, I guess, could be a synonym for outrageous achievement. And one of the expertise that you have is not only that personal development, but how it is applicable to business and how a collective group can seriously turn around or achieve this outrageous results um, and one of the key points that I found uh, speaking with you, knowing you and, you know, kind of previewing the book uh, is engagement. Y you part of uh, this outrageous achievement is how do we not only in our personal lives get engaged in our personal lives, meaning go ahead and effectuate or actualize what we want. But I think it's the biggest hurdle that corporations and companies face in America is that we have these extraordinary capable people with extraordinary technology that gives them extraordinary access and information and about 87 to 93% of them aren't engaged. So we're getting just a minimal performance or productivity out of what should be an outrageous productivity. Yeah, that's an excellent question. And you know, I'm going to bring it right down to personal development. Like if, it is a it is a secret that if people really understood that a 30 minute a day commitment to personal development would allow them to open their heart, dream bigger, have more courage, have more confidence, that engagement you're talking about is not only going to happen one on one with them, it's going to happen in their work environment, it's going to happen in their personal environment, it's going to inspire them in their creative expression. It's that willingness, as Jim Rohn always said, to work harder on yourself than your business or your job. And it's just, it is, it is a, it is. It is something I believe people put on the back burner. They don't appreciate or realize or they underestimate, I guess, the importance of that willingness to work on themselves. Yeah, and it's so interesting that the people that need it most are afraid to ask and the people that others perceive as being the most fulfilled, passionate, purposeful, and even profitable continue to seek advice, help, and this personal development and you know you're living proof of that i am always amazed in my life of being able to coach and mentor such successful people like yourself and chairmen of companies around the world and you do the same thing uh but yet we can't we all seek help we all ask for help not enough normally but more importantly the people that most need it i think that if we spent most of our time just telling them and helping them and giving them courage to ask for help we would, you know, cure half the problems of personal development and productivity. Um, why do you think people are afraid, especially those who need it most, to ask for help? Well, I think it boils down to fear. 
I, I, not everybody has the courage to look internally. I mean, if you talk to anyone who's done the work, and I, I consider myself one of those people who have done the work and continue to do the work, it takes courage to figure yourself out. It takes courage to dream big. It takes courage to strive. It takes courage to really understand what drives us. And I believe what stops most people are, you know, I talk about the five universal fears. Fear of success, fear of failure, fear of change, fear of judgment, fear of rejection. And to tie this up, I also have learned that the avoidance of working on themselves is because they are comfortable in their settling. And I know this is hard to hear for so many people, but they're settling because, David, it's good enough. Areas in their life, they're not satisfied. It's not what they want. It's not where their dream is. It's not their goal. They're comfortable enough. It doesn't hurt enough so that they're not willing to take that step forward, move through their fears, and move in the direction of those dreams. Yeah, I mean, and you speak on stages, you podcast, you teach, you mastermind, you write books, all of the different things to encourage and inspire and elevate other people. Um, and yet all of the lessons, you know, as your mentor and coach and, and cohort in crime, uh, all of those lessons are ones that you and I face every day. You know, I, I see in the course of my mentoring that sometimes, uh, you know, it's we're made by the people who say no to us. We're made by the people who point out the truth. Uh, there's that great book that I love, you know, don't take yes for an answer. And yet every time I give someone a no as an answer or, you know, give them a little bit of a what I call perturbating uh, idea, something that perturbs their comfort zone, you know, there's this initial process the difference is, you know, people like you, when I perturb you to have you think about things in a different way, change the way you look at things so the things you look at change, it just takes minutes or moments for you to reconcile and process it. Where, you know, when I was younger and I see a lot of my younger clientele or less experienced, you know, they'll bring it up two weeks later, four weeks later, you know, and you can tell it's just haunted them. The truth has haunted them. And you know, they can't get over it. They have wasted more energy on what was said to help them than helping themselves. Why do you think that insecurity, what I, you know, talked about earlier too, a spiritual <laughs> insecurity, um, really creates such a burden and then people don't want to be constructive. I mean, I, when I first started coaching, I danced around telling the truth because I didn't want to lose my clients. You know, when you sit there and say, what do you mean you're, you're happy making a million dollars a year? You know, and you have some millionaire sitting there with their ego and they're like, why the hell am I paying you to shit on me? I'm not shitting on you. I'm just trying to get you not to limit. Like we live in infinity and you're not living there, bro. And just because you're successful in your mind doesn't mean that you're not even close to your potential. All different varieties and levels. What is it that, you know, still has that baby feeling of don't pick on me. Don't tell me the truth. Right. Because they'd rather be miserable and right. I love they'd that. Rather be Say it again. They'd, ra <laughs> they'd rather be miserable or comfortable or frustrated or stuck, but right. And they're so keen on their rightness, they, they, they can't look beyond it. And that's a lesson I've learned over the years. I mean, we had one of those, what did you call it, perturbing moments on Thurber, our said, yeah. most Marshall Thurber, by the way, anti-social behavior. You perturb people. It's great. You perturb. You perturb wonderfully. I can't imagine you not perturbing people with love and grace, David, because that's <laughs> only been my reality with you. And yet, when I work with you, if we get into a perturbing moment, my mind immediately goes to help. I pay him because I trust him. And if I trust him, I'm going to listen to him. And I'm, I've learned, and perhaps being 60, maybe it's years of experience, right? But I've learned to sit back. And if the more uncomfortable the comment is, the more or the faster I want to sit back and evaluate and think about it. I don't have to be right. I know I'm not right. I know I'm not perfect. I don't strive for perfection, but I do strive to be my best. 
and to be open to growth. What were you talking about? The spiritual insecurity and, and, and shortening the time in that space. I mean, I really think this is, this is, this is a key topic that keep people stuck and keep them from moving forward. Yeah, and I love that need to be right, uh, you know, over so many different things. The need to be offended. You know, these are two of the things that I find, uh, if you only focused on those two needs of the ego, and they are needs of the ego to be right and offended. I mean, from my early childhood, I always held, hey, 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 it's better to be kind than to be right. But I wasted millions of dollars, relationships, emotional energy, uh, money, all types of things, because I just didn't understand. And I spent so I'm not talking minutes and moments in the need to be right, but weeks, months and years being right. And you know, there's no expansion, none at all. Just think about it. If you're right about everything, you are done growing, accelerating, expanding. And remember, the universe is expanding. So you're not even going to keep up with everything around you if you are if you and then you're really going to feel stuck and you're really going to yeah. feel diminished and you're really going to feel separate uh and if yeah. you don't allow that expansion that growth all via lessons all being kind uh and fighting and practicing those needs for you and, and i'll let you go after this uh because i think it's part of outrageous achievement is knowing oneself What's your greatest need of, of your ego? What, what's the one for you? For me, it's the need to be offended. You know, it, it's just something I practice still every day. What's your big one? The need to feel safe. I think uh, safe and security. Safety and security. I'd have to look back to, okay, that's a, that's a very, <laughs> I felt that I know that. I'll just perturb you in front of I'm, everybody. I'll perturb you in front I'm of everyone. Totally, Tell me your inner secrets. <laughs> I will tell you my inner secrets. Now I just I'm 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 noticing how true that is by how that just landed in my my chakras. So safety and security for sure. I think and and I've I've worked on this or tried my best to figure it out. I've done the inner child work. I'm the middle of three girls. Um, being divorced for ten years now and 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 working through my life and my career on my own. Um, I think safety and security, definitely. And so my mantra is turn fear into faith, right? Turn fear into faith. So when I start to move into that space of fear or that space of not feeling safe or that space of insecurity, my mantra, which has been for 10 years and I have it posted all over my house, I turn fear into faith and that allows me to take a breath and step back and know that I have everything inside me. Like if I can say this to my audience, I, I got to remind myself to say it to myself. I have everything inside me to move in the direction I want to go. And one more thing I want to point out that supports me in this, David, what I've learned is to have, is to not be attached. Right. So I try to go through every project, every area of my life, whether it's my relationships or my creative expression, my, my writing, my coaching, my speaking, um, my career, my health. I try to move forward with a high, high intention. Like I'm going to give it my best. So that gives me the courage to dream big and stretch and get out of my comfort zone and and have the discipline and the accountability, that high intention and low attachment. Now I'm not saying this is easy, but I'm saying it is worth it. And so the better I get and the more consistent I keep that high intention, but that low attachment, meaning regardless of the outcome, I gave it my best. Regardless of the outcome, I have options. Regardless of the outcome, I still can achieve and move in the direction of my dreams. That high intention, low attachment keeps me in that space of being able to turn my fear into faith. You absolutely have done that. And the book is Living Proof, Outrageous Achievement, coming out February 23rd everywhere. Uh, for me, I've learned about you. It's amazing. The development of changing your perspective from attaching to the mountains in front of you 
and instead, you know, turning that fear of not being able to go over those mountains or being damaged or hurt by those mountains to attaching to what created the mountains. And you have done a wonderful job of not only creating uh, what and attaching to that which creates the mountains, but helping other people do the same. And your book's going to even accelerate that more. Uh, Leslie, everybody can find you at lesliezan.com. They, you have a great blog at forward slash blog at leslie.zan, Z-A-N-N. And the book will be available pre-sale. When will it be pre-sale available? Actually, what I want to do is I want to invite your listeners, David, to go to a special link, lesliezan.com forward slash OA bonus. OA there you go. for Outrageous Achievement, OA bonus. And they're going to receive an excerpt of the book. And they're going to receive some bonus materials not found in the book. And they're going to be the first people to hear about when the book goes live. And they're even going to get a special price on the book because we're launching the book on my birthday. So it's going to be my gift to the audience. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. We're tough. We're well, knowing just you, great. it's going to be incredible. I know the book, so I know it's incredible already. It's outrageously amazing. Just like you, incredible, amazing. Leslie Zan, thank you so much. Come join me again, okay? I would love to. Thank you so much. And I wish everybody a great day. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs> You're awesome. All righty. Leslie Zan, check it out. Outrageous Achievement, lesliezan.com forward slash OA bonus. Outrageous Achievement bonus, B-O-N-U-S. All righty. Very good. Uh, let me take a few questions. I think Christine uh, wanted to um, ha have a question for me and makers of Maine. Is she here? If not, I will take one of these questions. There's so many in here. Thank you, uh, everyone, for asking them. What's the most challenging task you've ever completed? Um, most challenging task I've ever completed. I think getting my daughter through college, you know, all the way from birth to college. Um, <laughs> that was an amazing task. And I'm so proud. I couldn't have done a better job and been more proud of uh, her and congratulate her. She's killing it, graduated early from college, but it was a 21 year journey to get her there and uh, to see you know what amazing young woman she is. And actually Colleen mentors her. So I wanna thank Colleen as well. Uh, another amazing young woman uh, who runs my company. Uh, so if you don't know Colleen, she's in there. Uh, check her out. Uh, let's see here. Um, I think, it might be under Connex TV. Could that be uh, Makers of Maine? Connex TV, is that Makers of Maine? Does she have a question for me? I, I don't know what to do, Team Meltzer. Tension is early. Let me answer a few questions. Uh, I'm really excited about having my friends from Tension here. Uh, unbelievable uh, apparel, uh, just ridiculous ridiculous stuff um and it looks cool but it's functional it keeps you warm uh every single sport ridiculous uh anyway we'll get them on here if you haven't seen tension you know, check it out it's intention t-e-n-s-o-n tension usa.com what is your favorite thing to do with your family anything my favorite thing to do with my family is what they love to do and i love to be and participate uh, with them in whatever they love to do. I lucky to have such a big family. So I have a diverse things I can do from running, surfing, working out, watching TV, playing games. We played board games last night. Uh, miles one, by the way, <laughs> but man, anything I could do having dinner. One of my favorites, the dinner with the Meltzers is ridiculous. It could be the best reality TV show in the world. Uh, but they probably take my kids away, but it'd be hilarious. How do you know what is or and isn't for you? And no one knows for a fact what we are doing here. It's just based on faith in reality, I think, uh, religious, et cetera. Um, look, I take inventory of my values every day. Uh, inventory of my values every single day uh, in order to align and angle to what I want. And I have faith of any religion that I'll end up somewhere better. I'm happy where I'm at. 
I use these personal experiential giving and receiving values of the what, the who, the how, the now, practicing ending fear to angle in an enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential to get to my potential and have faith that it's going to end up somebody and somewhere better than that. All right, I'm getting to here now, ever. And uh, he is the CEO of one of my favorite companies, Tencent USA, unbelievable uh, apparel. Uh, here we go. I'm going to let him in. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I all have his Connects TV in there. Let me just check. Everybody doing okay today? Remember, Training Friday is mommy issues. First time I've ever done it. Join me 11 a.m. Pacific time. Mommy issue training on Friday, 11 a.m. If you miss it, it's simple. The replays are featured everywhere. They are featured everywhere. The replays, you can find them on the playbook. Uh, download it, like it. Uh, on Spotify, Entrepreneur, every platform. Uh, you'll love it. IG Live, the trainings are on. Uh, and even now Clubhouse. If you haven't checked out Clubhouse, you have to check it out. It's all audio all day, all night. It's a addicting and unbelievable learning all right i'm waiting for everett here uh put declined uh oh not good <laughs> can you reach out again everett if you don't mind uh i just hit your thing and uh he was back there send me a request would love to have you we'll get you on here Everett. thank you so much for your patience my dear friend tense in usa can't wait at tense in usa there we are Again, you're right there. No problem. All righty. The great Everett Cruz here, CEO of Tencent. Um, hopefully you've had time to go to TencentUSA.com while we're waiting uh, for Everett uh, to talk about uh, his sportswear and how. Because it, the minute you see it, it's so unique. Hey! <laughs> Good morning, David. All right. I just have to tell you, look, we got the same shirt on. I just have it underneath this one. I, I was really <laughs> expecting a cooler jacket, I have to admit. <laughs> I spent my morning, I wake up really early, and I spent my morning on your website. And, you know, I, I get a lot of people that, you know, throw me different stuff to look at. And from the very first page, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, this stuff is awesome. Like, everything and every yeah. page got better. Um, yeah. You know, I, I will tell you, obviously, you have... Uh, from what I read, is especially an unbelievable protection system for the elements in your product line. But what really stands out beyond that, because a lot of people, you know, can create a sleeping bag and put it over you and call it a jacket, uh, <laughs> you know, but I think <laughs> the design, you, you talk about elevated style. If people want to be stylish and warm and protected, you guys have, you're it. You're the IT of sportswear, and I see it all. So congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's, I think it's um, where the brand is from, Sweden. We, we, um, we, we grew up in that kind of environment, you know, the weather. We, uh, you know, I, I used to say this. Uh, actually, my mom, when she came visit here in the L.A., and she said, where is the wind? Where is the weather? And I said, well, this is how it always is. In Sweden, we have, there's always wind, there's always a weather, there's always raining, drizzling, and, uh, you know, so, example, like, when you go out in the morning, you always bring one or two different layers with you, because you never know what the weather is going to end up, and, uh, and I think, so, it's a, it's a good, it's a good place where the, you know, our design is coming from, I think. <laughs> yeah, and then cross design with the most stylish of sports, in my opinion, are tennis and golf. Uh, yeah. You know, where style, you know, is so prevalent and you can see the high end elevated style as if, you know, you've cross pollinated, you know, this functionality uh, with incredible tennis pizzazz. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, I'd say it's, um, I think the founder, Paul, in the 70s, he was a, um, you know, a fashion designer and start to you know designing um i think it was started most with beachwear and and it kind of growed into um what is trendy in sweden is you know wearing the clothes but because of the weather we have we have to wear clothes that can fit all different kind of environments and 
temperatures and uh, rain or sun, whatever. And um, and I think there was the foundation to the company and the the brand that made it into um, yeah what it is today and being recognized as a brand that focus on fashion, but at the same time, it's got to work in in the reality out there when you when you're out in the weather. <laughs> Of course, and, you know, it's funny because you talk about Sweden's weather as well as, you know, for example, like in Ireland, I always joked around, you know, you <laughs> want to know what the weather is going to be like, you know, ask me in five minutes. And so, you know, I, I can see the functionality in the layering side of stuff of being able to, you know, as the weather changes, make sure that you still are comfortable um, yeah. and protected effectively as well. Now, one of the things I notice is you have partnered with the global leaders in retail. Uh, and obviously, with the pandemic, that ball game with retailers has changed immensely. What has shifted yes. in your business since obviously you have partnered and part of your channel is you know the highest end retailers from blooming you know Bloomingdale's to Harrods to you know the highest end retailers that 's changed in the last year yes well i mean our, our idea i think was from the beginning is to how can we keep the cost down to our consumers but still pre be able to you know uh, marketing our product and um, and make the product available for anyone and as you know like more middle hands you have then you know the cost goes up and and so forth so we you know almost a year and a half ago we decided says like well i think we're going to focus mostly online and then do our marketing by example what we do we travel to a lot of different ski resorts and uh, um, um, events that people doesn't matter what if it's in cycling and tennis and skiing and uh, sailing and everything that we can show our products and people can um, look at it and touch it and then you know we you know we advise them to go back online and they can you know further if they want to buy or check it out yeah you know that business has changed so much because it's so much yeah. easier one they can actually go online right when they're standing with you now because yeah. of the access that we have and the bandwidth that we have it is only get greater with you know 5g what we're going to be able to do by displaying ordering integrating you know i'm working with verb technologies for example where you could have that jacket on and people could order right from my ig live you know, if you're yeah. wearing one of your jackets, uh, they can order right there on an IG live streaming. That's not that far away. I see Evan Carmichael there. He needs one of these. Evan, man, he's up in Canada. You got to check out Tencent. Uh, my friend Evan Carmichael, incredible YouTuber and IG liver and inspirer. Uh, if you haven't checked him out uh, as well. Thanks for joining us. Um, okay. In the in the side of that business, uh, it's hyper competitive as well. You have to, uh, what I call, make yourself equal, and then establish the difference. Educate people on the difference. What are some of those appreciative differences between Tencent and the competitors uh, or alternatives that are out there in your space? Well, I mean, we we try to, I think, lead the the fashion part of it, the design part of it. Um. I think also it's trying to keep the, you know, the cost down as much as possible. I mean, there was, you know, as you know, maybe um, there was, I remember walking into a ski store and then I want to buy a new outfit and I'm looking at jackets and ski pants and I'm, <laughs> you're talking about twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 to get an outfit. And, um, and then after learning about the fabrics and the cost of fabrics and the design, I feel like this could easily be, you know, this could, you know, we can bring this cost down to the consumer by changing a certain things that's, you know, how things have always been done in the last 30, 40 years or so in the industry. So we, um, we always fight for, you know, getting the highest quality, but at the same time, if we can buy it in a bigger quantities and you get better prices, we can pass it on to the consumer, you know, the, the marketing product of our, um, more uh, you know items and um, how we distribute it and um, yeah try to do everything like we want everybody to be able to afford to be able to get the clothing they want and they like and looking good at the same time without spending a fortune on it but you're still getting the highest quality possible you can 
have out there. Well, you, you've achieved the wow factor in two respects. When I had my initial impression, it was, wow, how amazing the style is. And then, wow, how inexpensive the product is, you know, yeah. for what you get. You know, it's a very, very value-based pricing to high-end, sophisticated style, uh, which is incredible. Last question real quick. You know, obviously, you've been in the realm of elite competition. Uh, you actually started the Santa Monica Tennis Academy. You yourself, yeah. you know, dealing with a lot of pro athletes and competing yourself, uh, you know, at a high level. You know, I talk to CEOs all the time. People would be amazed, you know, how many CEOs were athletes. You know, college, pro, it's amazing. What have you taken from your athletic experience to make yourself a better leader? Or what has carried over from those lessons you learned on the court that you now use in the boardroom? I mean, I think I used all of it. Man, to be an athlete, so people don't understand. They think, you know, you go out there and you do your thing and then eventually one day you compete in it and you're, you're there. But as you probably know yourself, it's, it's hours and hours of work. You learn how to suffer. You learn how to pick yourself up and do it again and do it again. And fail, is, it's just part of it. It's, it's something that actually thrives me and makes me go harder. Um, I remember many years ago, when I started my academy and actually started in West LA and, um, you know, the city pro and the tennis academies um, operating in our facilities. So, you know, matter of a week or two weeks, I had to find a different facility to move to. And everywhere I went, I got turned down. And after a month goes by, I said, Oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my business. And, um, you know, I, there's going to be two choices here. Keep on going and fight hard or, you know, find something else to do. And I said to myself, no, this is just like another ma match or it's a nine, another training session. I mean, you don't give up and I keep trying and I keep on trying. And constantly being creative got me to a spot where I am today. And 20 years later, and I still say the same thing. It's, it was so close, but I never gave up and I always believed in it. And I'm... My motto's always been like, never give up. Always believe in yourself. And one way or another, you are going to succeed. <laughs> and, you, and you certainly have. And, you know, one of those great lessons, just to reiterate, uh, Ever Cruz, CEO of Tencent USA, you have learned to love what you do. You know, you had mentioned it's, no, it's not an easy journey. Everyone loves to see the outcome and the success. Uh, yeah. But in order to get there, you have to learn to love what you do. The early mornings, the late nights, the workouts, the soreness, the fear, the anxiety, what I call the spiritual insecurities that exist, the loneliness, the separation, and I could go on and on. But you have to learn to love what you do. And you certainly have, and your outcome has been tremendous. I can't reiterate to everyone. Uh, if you go to TensonUSA.com, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's so nice that, you know, when you get something that's super cool and you're like, here, just sample it or just look at it, it makes it so nice, e so much easier to share a vision. And you've been able to create that with your company. Uh, so everyone, check out TensonUSA.com, at TensonUSA, the incredible CEO, Everett Cruz. Thank you so much. You are now top of my list in the sportswear game. Congratulations. Oh, uh, peace. Right on. Great job. Take care, Everett. Thank you. You too. All right. That was the best of the best, the 1% of the 1%. And I can back that up because I went there today and I was blown away. I got an early morning email. You got to check this out. Uh, Everett's coming on. I said, oh, yeah, I, I've heard of him. And I really delved into uh, success, a, a vibration, a higher frequency. TensionUSA.com. Thank you, Everett, for sharing all of those great lessons. Leslie Zan, outrageous achievement. Check her out at outrageousachievement.com forward slash Oh, a bonus if you want uh, excerpts and free stuff from her. Of course, my training is Friday. Mommy issues on a completely different vibe. So if you have mommy issue, daddy issues, if you feel like that's getting in your way, you can join me free, david at dmelter.com. I'll send my books, guides, exercises, all for free. I'll sign it, pay for shipping, send it to you, david at dmelter.com. Or you can join my text community. Just ask this crowd. They'll put the thumbs up. 
Uh, even though Team David Meltzer put the phone number up there wrong, I'm going to point that out. <clears throat> it's 949-298-2905, not 2805. I may have to send uh, Team David Meltzer back to Stater Brothers. Uh, 949-298-2905. Awkward, huh, Jakey Bakey? What do you think? David at dmelter.com. Let's take a last question. End on a high note. Love it, everybody. What do you mean by spiritual insecurity? <laughs> I think your spiritual insecurity is indicated by the needs of the ego-based consciousness, the need to be right, the need to be uh, separate, inferior, superior, the need to be uh, anxious, frustrated, angry, worried. All these different things are the insecurities of your spirituality. Your spirituality is your capability of being in spirit, uh, in spirit, connected to and through the most powerful source of love, light, and lessons. Love, light, and lessons all the time. You can't give what you don't have. We need to focus in on effectively communicating with that powerful source of light, love, and lessons, allowing it come through us for and to and through for everyone else. Yes, give your life away. That's the best thing you can do. Diminish your spiritual insecurity. And remember, most importantly, catch me on Friday. It's Spotify, Entrepreneur. Download the playbook. Share it. Like it. Email me if you need anything. David at dmelcher.com. And have a blessed day. Remember, be kind to your future self. And do good deeds. We'll see you tomorrow.